Hey, my name's Kat and you're watching The Creative Introvert. And today I've got your astrology forecast for the week of May 24th until the 30th. So we're closing in on the end of May already. So starting the week on Monday, the 24th. And the only thing that I really wanted to talk about for the first couple of days of the week is really just the moons in Scorpio. Um, not happy with that color. I usually use red. Okay. So it's a bit of a moody start to the week, you could say. Um, it could definitely be worse. Uh, the moon being in Mars' sign and the Mars and, and the Mars being in the moon sign. Um, neither are happy in each other's sign. Um, it, just because like pointy things like Mars don't generally go well with like soft, squidgy things like the moon. <laughs> Let's say uh, that's how I imagine it anyway. Um, but they're in what we call mutual reception. So I've mentioned this before when the moon was in Aries, um, some of the fact that Mars is in Cancer right now um, in, its um, in its full is a little bit mitigated right now, whenever the moon is going to be in Mars' sign. This could support some challenging but necessary emotional duking it out, uh, whether it's with somebody else or, you know, within yourself. You know, you might just need to have an ugly cry at the start of the week. Anger and sadness can exist very closely for many of us. I think it's important to give, you know, either both of those emotions space. Uh, and also keep in mind that tension is going to be building right now as we're gearing up to not just a full moon, but a lunar eclipse. So let's just skip to that because that's that's what's brewing um, in the middle of the week. And this is our first eclipse of the year. So this is happening at five degrees of Sagittarius. So, um, you know, we, we've had the nodes in Sagittarius and Gemini for around a year now, um, and we've got about seven months or so to go of this eclipse cycle playing out in, in Sagittarius and Gemini. And I wouldn't normally say this about an eclipse, but I'm almost looking forward to this one. Um, and that's because of Jupiter, who is ruling um, this eclipse, this, the, you know, the moon being in Sagittarius. So we're, we're you know, looking at Jupiter um, is, is really dignified in Pisces right now. And the other ruler of this eclipse, the planet who is in charge of the sun really right now, Mercury, is also dignified in Gemini. So that's really nice. So thinking about Jupiter in particular right now with, with the moon being so, you know, emboldened here at this moment um, in Sagittarius. So what does Jupiter represent? Well, we're thinking about beliefs, uh, what we believe to be good and just and true, um, the big picture in life, and maybe making adjustments because of that. You know, eclipses can, uh, sorry, lunar eclipses, these kind of hyped up full moons can speak to one door closing and another opening. So again, we're probably going to be seeing some adjustments um, in some area of our lives, some people will be noticing at this eclipse cycle more than others. Anyone with, um, you know, any of the the mutable signs on the angles, so that's Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, um, as well as just any key planets around those early degrees of um, particularly Gemini and Sagittarius. So yeah, this might be something that is hard to let go, um, but I think letting go here is kind of key because of that south node um, where where the moon is. And a south node lunar eclipse can often speak to more endings than, you know, beginnings, for example. Uh, it can really take up to six months to really see the um, effects in our lives of these. Um, I'd say even the entire eclipse cycle might not even come clear until the very end. I personally noticed that with the Cancer Capricorn eclipses recently. So yeah, a lunar eclipse, again, this is a story from our past, manifesting or completing, a resolution, a sense of closure, finality, ending. Um, and it might be helpful actually to look back, just if you want to understand this more in your own personal lives, look back to the last eclipses on this axis. So this was around um, the end of November, the 28th, um, and December 11th. So that's when we started getting these eclipses really coming through, even though I think we had a little bit last summer. Think about the whole sign house that this is playing out in to get some clarity on that, particularly where the moon is in Sagittarius, but also look at Gemini, the opposite sign. And you can also look at any planets or um, even lots. So the lot of um, fortune and the lot of diamond or spirit, they can be also like important players here. If you're having an eclipse around these, these points, it's, it's still worth paying attention to. 
And if you'd like to talk more about how these this eclipse cycle in Gemini and Sag is playing out for you, well, you know, feel free to let me know. I've got astrology readings available on my site um, now. So just um, if you'd like to talk more about your chart and how the, this transit could be playing out for you specifically, you can do that. Just go to thecreativeintrovert.com slash astrology. Okay, so that's the eclipse. That's probably the, you know, the biggest news of the week, but um, there's still more. So on the following day, um, we have Venus, Venus square Neptune. So this one can be kind of challenging, obviously, for relationships, as that's what Venus signifies, uh, one of her, you know, significations. Codependence, lies, deception, disillusionment. And I'm saying those because of um, Neptune and its, you know, propensity to to dissolve things and to shatter our illusions really um and and why does this happen well it's usually because we've put somebody up on a pedestal uh, somebody you know they've got no business being there they didn't ask for it and and we've got no business putting them there but but we do it so we need to take responsibility for that if that is something that is playing out in our lives you know, whether it's raising up a partner or a friend or anyone else in our lives to an almost godlike standard. Um, and then we notice that, you know, they can't possibly live up to that standard. No one can. That's a very Venus-Neptune dynamic that could play out. Um, and it could also just be expectations that we have um, for other things in our life, like, oh, I wanted my home to look a certain way and it's not. Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. And another positive part of this when when we have noticed that we're projecting stuff onto people not just bad stuff right because often we talk about projections and we talk about we're projecting shadow stuff um darker things about ourselves onto others um in this case it might have been something positive that we're projecting onto another person and it's really important that we take that back that we claim back our golden shadows you might call it um parts of ourselves that um we aren't um owning fully like good parts of ourselves so that could be the maybe the positive um, side of this can also speak to issues around substance abuse addiction and just letting go in some way as we indulge our senses i'm reading my notes again and i'm seeing that idea of letting go and it's reminding me of that um the lunar eclipse in sagittarius and i think that theme of letting go even though it's like a really you know thing that people talk about a lot um in astrology and other kinds of spiritual practices but i, I do think that there is a theme this week around um you know what isn't serving me anymore uh with venus neptune it could be like letting go and um in a sort of negative way like i'm checking out i'm bypassing this but i think um the positive of this could be well that line of thinking or that line of behavior that pattern isn't serving me anymore so that's what i'm going to be letting go of okay so moving on to Friday, um, the moon has entered Capricorn here. So we're going to see maybe a bit of like coming back to reality, um, which is going to be a nice reality check as Venus starts to separate slowly from Neptune. Um, the moon in Capricorn is great for a reality check, um, really getting practical, realistic. It's also going to be opposite Mars. So I feel like there might be a bit of um you know, tension there between our head and our heart, our thinking and our feeling. Um, you know, it's not the most practical Mars while it's in Cancer. Um, but I think um, this is a nice kind of balancing out here. Like the moon is kind of just reminding us to you know, just, just like ground ourselves. Again, we don't have a whole lot of, in fact, we have hardly any Earth in the chart right now, especially if you're talking about the inner planets. So... And then 28th, moving into the 29th, depending on where you are, um, Venus will be conjunct Mercury and will actually overtake Mercury. So that's kind of cool. It's cool to see, um, just interesting really, to see Venus moving faster than Mercury. Normally Mercury is a smidge faster than Venus. Venus overtaking Mercury. Um, to me, this is like Venus is saying, take a break, Mercury, you know, um, Venus is in the house now. Mercury, you're going to be going retrograde very shortly. It's going to be stationing, I believe, the on the 29th. So I'm thinking that all of this heavy mental energy of the past month right now can potentially slow down. Uh, you know, Venus is saying, relax, have some fun. You know, it's particularly, I think, fun and playful in Gemini. So, you know, maybe we're having a bit of like a 
the potential for a bit of a, an indulgent end to the month if we really go down that line of Venus, Neptune, um, doubling down on that could end up being a bit like wanting to check out in some way. But I'm hoping that there's um there are some good upsides, especially if you've been too like in your head recently about things. Okay, and then 29th um, or the 30th, 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 depending on where you are, um, Mercury will be stationing retrograde. So, and this will happen at 24 degrees of Gemini. So we're also, you know, at this point in the month, and we will be, especially while Mercury is retrograde, letting ourselves review things, you know, everything, whether it's relationship issues, work issues, health, whatever house um, Gemini lines up with for you. And you can also look to see what other, um, where Virgo lines up for you, because Mercury will also be ruling that house as well. Mercury retrogrades are a great time to reassess, not to make any major moves or major changes, just to reassess, take a look at things, take stock and review what's been happening. Um, and you can take a look at, you know, depending what time frame you're interested in, you know, let's say since the last, um, you know, Mercury cycle, uh, we can be thinking about, um, and that was when Mercury was um, retrograde in Aquarius earlier in the year. I think that was February or so. Um, we're also thinking about themes of commerce, technology, communication, education, ideas, spreading of ideas, media sources, and maybe shifts around these topics. That could be on a more like general level as well. So yeah, and, and just like thinking back to that um, that start of the year, you know, how much has changed since then, since you know, February, um, January, February, like what, what have you learned? You know, what has that Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus dynamic showed you? Because that's also been this major tone of the year so far. What has the eclipse cycle been telling you, you know, since the eclipses at the end of November, early December. Now we're, we're seeing that cycle repeat again. And don't worry if you don't have all the answers yet. These are just some things to maybe journal on um, at this point in the year. We're getting you know almost halfway through the year. So just I think this particular Mercury retrograde is a really good one just to reflect on things. And um, so, yeah, Mercury will be retrograde from the 29th of May until the 22nd of June. And we'll travel from 24 degrees of Gemini to 16 Gemini and will be out of its shadow fully by the 8th of July. So um, it, when it will move fully past 24 Gemini. So it's a long time to just um, be, you know, chewing on this uh, mercurial side of things. And as always, you know, don't freak out. You don't have to like not take any kind of action during the Mercury retrograde period. It's just having that knowledge that there might be this reassessment returning to things. And as always, Mercury is telling us to pay attention that I think is a really key lesson also on the 30th um, I'll just mention that the moon will be moving into Aquarius uh, this is nice it's it's going to be trying that that stellium in Gemini so quite social oriented you know it's that thing of like well let's discuss things what does that mean let's let's verbalize our ideas in order to really think about them and it reminds me of the start of the year, the chart at the moment, it just making me think of the start of the year when there was no fire in, in the chart or in the sky, you know, and, and, and how do we feel when there is no fire? Well, we might feel a bit cold, literally. I mean, it might be heating up in the Northern Hemisphere, but there might be a coldness in the air, lacking in enthusiasm, you know, lacking in that kind of get up and go your mojo. Um, we've got a lot of air and water. So a lot of talk, emoting, musing on things. So we're not so incentivized to act right now. So that's just um, something to, you know, think about as appropriate for this time. And the other thing that I'll mention happening this day is Mars will be entering a trine with Neptune. So themes here, going with the flow, right? Again, Mars is not like so motivated to act. In fact, like none of us might be feeling so motivated to act at the moment. But this is also a sense that maybe we don't have to figure it out. You know, we're given the chance to put on our spiritual warrior armor and go gently into the next month. Mercury is retrograde, Jupiter is in Pisces. I think a positive use of this trine energy is to basically find some peace. Um, you know, peace with our ideals, our beliefs, our vision, 
our knowledge, the facts being right, you know, however we feel things should be done right now, which is like everyone has an opinion about and maybe, um, you know, at the start of the month, I feel like we had so much bravado about those things. Um, and now I'm thinking or hoping that there's maybe a bit of softening around that. You know, it's saying maybe I was wrong or even better, like maybe I don't know. Uh, maybe you can teach me something. So it might be, just be quite nice to take a break from this very active mental energy, you know, and keeping in mind that um, uh, sun, the sun will be conjunct the, the nodes depending on what nodal system you use but um sun will be moving into the, into a conjunction with the north node which can be very kind of over the top hubristic ambitious um so i think just a nice counter to that is you know go with the flow literally go for a swim or take a qigong class meditate use your energy in a peaceful yet strong directed way and I think that will all really help the mental chatter of um, the Gemini stuff right now. Okay, so that's what I've got for the basically the last week of May. Uh, I hope you're enjoying this. Thank you all for your comments and your support for this channel. I really, really do appreciate it. I really appreciate all the Patreons that I've got supporting the show. Um, yeah, it means so much to me so thank you for that um and some of the benefits that my patreons get well you get a monthly uh, written report uh, about how to make the most of the best transits coming up for the month ahead particularly if you do have a creative business or any business really um you can also attend the monthly meetup so we've got a creative moon circle um uh, this this week we'll be celebrating the the lunar eclipse um and at the end of the month, we'll always have a monthly astrology forecast. And I take, um, you know, live questions and stuff like that. So, so you can find out about how to support the show and gain access to those benefits at patreon.com slash creative intro. Thanks for watching as always, and hopefully see you next week.